All right, go. Don't let off, just go. I have the police car in the garage because the rear wheel has split in half. It's completely worn out and it had to get upgraded to go-kart wheels. These are go-kart rain tires. I'm going to show you guys how I got this thing installed. It's running single one and a quarter horsepower or a thousand watt 36 volt motor. It's got... <laughs> got a lot of speed right now it only has electronic braking so watch this video and I'm going to show you how I got this installed put the axle in it installed the motor and future video is going to show installing a disc brake and getting these front wheels replaced because right now this does not steer there is with a live rear axle with these grippy rain tires there's no steering so I'm hoping once we get set of rain tires for the front beef up the steering it's gonna start steering for my son all right if you are interested in this build make sure you subscribe to the channel because there's gonna be more coming but take a look and see how I got this thing upgraded or I'm going to put this 1000 watt 36 volt DC motor somehow into this car this car is seen better days and it's going to be our test car what's going on is the wheels are completely worn out so I'm gonna try and put some go-kart wheels on it like I've done over here on the Jeep I'm gonna go with a narrower rain tire so it'll clear a little better it'll be just about the same size as stock those aren't in yet, they've been ordered, but here's what I have. I have a 32 inch long, one inch diameter axle with a quarter inch keyway. I 3D printed some motor plates to try and fit this motor up in here. That's my plan. I've got some different number 35 to uh, chain rings got disc brake I got a caliper somewhere I got some go-kart hubs uh, these are the metric size there's also two and a half inch like standard American ones I got some bearing carriers I 3d printed these brackets here to try and sandwich the bearing carrier with the plastic what I'm going to do I'm gonna cut here and try and make room for the axle and I'm going to try and mount the axle and I'm going to try and mount the motor and see if I can get everything to line up try and save as much plastic as possible but I want to keep the original axle center the center of the car well, let's see how this goes Look at this. I got this drilled in, not quite bolted in yet, but I got the bolts kind of mocked up where they're gonna go. I got this side, I gotta, I gotta drill these holes out and then try and mock up where those bolts are gonna go. I think this is gonna work. This seems pretty sturdy. Remember, we're not going for super fast, we're just going for reliable. So I think this is gonna be able to handle that thousand horsepower <laughs> thousand watts <laughs> thousand horsepower that'd be great all right let's get that drilled in and put in place 
it has been a few days. I have made a lot of progress. I have designed this bracket here to go over the axle and then mount to this, this plate to then bolt through the car body into this plate, bolts the motor onto that plate, into the sprocket. I got one wheel mounted up. This is all tightened up and ready to go. I got the largest sprocket that I think I can fit. There's barely any clearance, but we'll see. I don't want it going too fast, but I have a couple other sprocket sizes. So we'll see. We'll see if I have to adjust that. Now this is printed out of PET G CF. So there's carbon fiber in the PET-G. Uh, this is strong. I don't think it's going anywhere. It is mounted pretty rigid. This side, I just have another axle mount going between the chassis. I have a disc brake and that's gonna go here, but I wanna get this all together and see if this is going to work first. I'm gonna be running two rigid batteries in series, running 40 volts. I'm just going to run this controller that I had in here already. I have another controller. It's not quite ready to go in yet, but soon. And yeah, so I just have this tire left to mount up. And then bolt that hub on, and it will be ready. Tire mounted up, got the tread going in the right direction. These are go-kart rain tires, 11 by six for five inch rims. All right, let's get the hubs ready. Here's the hub I'm gonna be using. This is a two and a half inch standard American go-kart hub for a one inch axle with a quarter inch keyway. When buying hubs, be aware that there are different bolt patterns. So this is a two and a half inch, and then there's also a, a common metric size. These are the common metric size. These are, you know, tire and rim can be bought on Amazon for like a hundred bucks. Um, these are real, you know, go-kart rims and tires for racing. These are just normal cheap Amazon ones. These end up do costing about the same, about a hundred dollars, but you have to mount them yourself. So yeah, this is a different hub pattern. And so these hubs wouldn't work with this, with this rim. So do be careful of that. For these, they come with two options. You can either put a stud in or a bolt. So there's two. This is for the stud. This is for the bolt. We're going to use the bolt. There is a nail bolt to go in here to tighten that down onto the axle. Okay, they're all in. Just need to tighten them up. It is best practice to put some Loctite on all these. I'm not going to do it on camera, but you just tighten these down. You need to use quarter inch keyway. I buy these in 12 inch sections. Just cut them with a sawzall. Wheels are on. We are ready to do our first test drive. I'm just gonna throw stuff in here and let them drive it. I'm not gonna put the back on yet. Yeah, put the seat in on second thought. I think I'm gonna put the back on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, do it. Go, come back. That wraps up this video. Remember, there's going to be one more, at least one more video on this build where I'm going to be installing a caliper, hydraulic disc brake caliper and rotor right there. A couple things that did change throughout this build. Uh, once we started testing, I did drop to a 70 tooth rear sprocket and nine tooth on the motor. So I'm running a nine tooth on the motor and a 70 tooth on the sprocket 
and that's number 35 chain. Uh, it started at a 79 tooth, and it was having issues with the drop in chains, and I repositioned the motor, straightened everything out, and we run it quite a few times around the yard. It's pretty hard because pretty minimal front steering right now. <laughs> We're going to get more runtime on it once we get those front wheels in. The front wheel should be in in just a couple days, and I'm hoping that makes this thing steerable. Remember, we're running two 20 volt batteries in series. I'm not going to disclose the electronics I switched to, so we did run quite a few test laps on the Speedy Squirrel speed controller, and I did switch to a different speed controller that I'm not going to show you quite yet couple more weeks and I should be able to show you what I have testing. Big issue I was having is the sprocket was moving side to side and I was losing chains so I did put collars on either side of that sprocket and it seemed to fix that. I do have a collar on either side of the bearing housing holding the axle in place. Uh, seems to be working. The electronic braking is pretty hard on the the chain and sprocket. Um, once once I go to the disc brake, it's going to have a, a pressure switch and that's just going to disable the motor and I'm not going to be using the electronic braking anymore. That's the plan with this police car. I hope you enjoyed this and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see how this thing finishes and how it does reliability wise. Thanks. Mm -hmm.